good morning everyone uh, thanks for joining today's session um, i will be your room manager here and i will pass on to the speaker to take us forward for today's session thank you prashant um, i hope i'm audible good morning everyone and welcome to day 2 of uh, this uh, data and ai summit uh, by databricks uh, today's session uh, we are going to talk about uh, dbrx and especially uh, our experiences uh, as lti mindtree on uh, some of the dbrx related stuff and the broader mosaic uh, ai stuff right and especially from a lens of a customer uh, implementation right uh, quick introduction my name is uh, indivar i go by indi uh, and i'm part of the lti mindtree's data and ai uh, practice uh, for folks who don't know about us, just a quick 30 seconds. Uh, we are uh, essentially a global uh, technology consulting and a digital solutions company um, headquartered here in the US as well as in India and uh, uh, an indeed consulting partner with uh, Databricks um, and essentially the transformation partner of the year for uh, Databricks um, uh, this year. Um, and uh, uh, there's a big focus within the organization to focus on uh, uh, data and AI, that's our largest uh, business, to truly uh, amplify uh, customers' uh, business outcomes. Now, from that particular perspective, if you look at AI or artificial intelligence has caught the um, imagination uh, for a number of years now, right? Uh, research around artificial intelligence has, as I'm sure all of you are aware, uh, has been going around since the 1950s, uh, but it was only in uh, 2014 when there was a major uh, advancement that happened with the launch of uh, GANs. And really, um, I think the, the public imagination got caught only about one and a half, two years back when ChatGPT basically got launched and overnight uh, became a big hit, right? It still claims to be the fastest number of uh, uh, users to hit a million much faster than let's say what a Facebook or even a, a TikTok and any of those other. So it's really gotten uh, consumer uh, traction. This market um, depends on who you talk to. Uh, the whole generative AI space is today uh, looked at at about $67 uh, billion, right? And people are saying it's going to grow, continue to grow at about 20, 25% year on year. And it will basically become a little over $200 billion in the next uh, five or six years or so, right? Now, obviously, a lot of that investment has gone um, into uh, startups. Uh, and one such startup, of course, was uh, Mosaic ML, which is something that uh, uh, Databricks bought uh, last year. And that has really helped Databricks kind of strengthen their entire positioning um, around generative AI. On one hand, uh, it helped them create a open foundational LLM, DBRX, which is what we are going to talk about. And then also the associated generative AI capabilities that are needed, uh, including uh, vector uh, search and those type of things, which are truly going to be helpful uh, to deliver a gen AI based uh, solution uh, using the Databricks stack. And that's what something that uh, we will uh, talk through. We've been an early adopter of uh, DBRX, as you know, it just got uh, went GA. Uh, but we've invested uh, in DBRX and the whole Databricks stack to create uh, capabilities to solve for three different types of areas within the generative AI space. One. Of course, everybody is looking at solving for uh, different kinds of business problems, right? Uh, in terms of whether you're talking about marketing or customer support or field support and so on and so forth. Uh, second, uh, which is also about how is generative AI actually able to help your data to decisions life cycle itself? So think of it like dog fooding. The work that we do uh, as data professionals, how is that generative AI can actually help us fast track it? And number three is truly about generative AI uh, and the solutioning around it truly requires a foundation, a strong foundation that can help uh, create and scale 
even more solutions. So from that particular perspective, uh, today's session is essentially going to be uh, about how uh, we uh, leveraged the whole DBRX uh, stack uh, across these three areas that I just talked about uh, to solve for uh, essentially a field operations problem uh, for one of the world's largest uh, elevator company. And what we are going to talk about uh, is uh, we will focus on seven, which is why you see seven in the, in the uh, heading, but we'll focus on seven interesting observations that we had uh, within that journey, right? And uh, I hope that will be something that will be of value to um, all of you as well. Uh, I'm also joined by uh, my colleague who was a critical part of that engagement, Abhishek. So we'll be here after the session in case you have any uh, questions. Now, uh, just to give you a quick context before we jump into the seven um, areas, um, this customer that we're talking about is not new to uh, the power of uh, analytics and AI. Uh, they are, in fact, uh, have invested heavily behind predictive maintenance, um, again, leveraging the Microsoft and Databricks stack uh, to truly uh, deliver uh, a solution which solves for, uh, I mean, like the word says, predictive maintenance, which means even before an elevator or a travelator or an escalator goes bad um, or any part fails, they are essentially able to get a probabilistic view. But as it happens uh, with probability, you are not always right, which means issues do happen. And when issues uh, happen, then in those particular cases, uh, the intent has been to improve uh, the resolution times, the fix rates, the installation times, and essentially help the field service agent uh, in a big manner, right? And this is really where we uh, leverage the uh, Databricks uh, native services and some of uh, our own tooling uh, that we have created uh, to kind of deliver this particular solution across the three areas that I mentioned. Uh, now, before I again jump into uh, the actual solution, uh, or sorry, the, the actual observations that we had, uh, just wanted to give you a very quick view of what the, the functional aspect of the solution was truly about, right? So this search AI uh, or search.ai solution the idea was to uh, provide real-time troubleshooting, right? So imagine a field service agent out in the field trying to figure out a part has gone bad, trying to figure out how to get uh, access to the manuals, how to get access to the install bases, how to get access to uh, a whole bunch of information, sensor ping data and all those stuff. Uh, and that's something that uh, really took up a lot of time. So the intent was, how is that these field service agents can uh, simply um, ask questions and they get their questions answered from this information that is extracted from three different types of uh, areas. One, structured, which is really where uh, you're talking about data present in a data warehouse, data lake, right? So think data like customer install based data, elevator data, and those type of things. Second, which is streaming information, uh, which is essentially coming from uh, the sensor pings because every elevator has uh, multiple sets of sensors and how do you get uh, those particular sensors uh, data out. And third, which is uh, truly unstructured, which is your equipment manuals for every single part that this uh, company uh, basically uses uh, as part of their uh, uh, elevators. Now, uh, this was uh, broadly, if you look at it, the functional uh, part of it. There is uh, the underlying technology, right? And I'm sure uh, a lot of people in the room, I'm sorry. I... sorry. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people in the room would be very interested to uh, understand the behind the scenes, uh, what really happened uh, when we went about creating this uh, search.ai app. So this entire process was uh, essentially divided into four uh, key steps, starting with um, obviously the data curation. The idea was 
how do you accelerate the data preparation, the data engineering uh, aspects of it? And more importantly, how do you bring the structured, the streaming, as well as the unstructured data using and storing it in Delta, storing the PDFs in volumes, and also doing data prep related activities, right? So obviously with a lot of unstructured data, you have to do uh, the case sensitization, the stop words, uh, white space removal, and more importantly, even image removal. Because uh, with DBRX right now, we are focused on text, but the manuals contain uh, the images as well. So that's something that still, uh, you can still go to that particular manual and uh, as you saw in the previous slide, go to the manual and see the, uh, the pictures and everything, but as part of the search criteria or as part of the answer that is generated, images uh, uh, basically don't come. The second piece was truly around uh, vector uh, embedding. Now, this is the area where uh, the idea was to take all of those uh, PDF files and basically break them up, the process that's called chunking, uh, break them up by pages, break them up by topics, and then uh, using uh, the uh, API that uh, Databricks provides, uh, using BGE as the technique, the Beijing uh, general embedding, and converting those particular embeddings using that API to store it in uh, the vector search or the uh, basically the Mosaic AI vector search that's available. The next step was uh, essentially around now leveraging the DBRX uh, instruct model. And that is really where uh, that particular model was used for uh, inferences as well as for uh, generating uh, different types of responses based on the queries that customers have. And then finally, uh, building out the Navigator app. And this is again a Navigator app where Langchain was leveraged. And I have an architecture diagram towards the end, uh, how we kind of did it. But Langchain to kind of uh, orchestrate the, the rack pipelines. Now, with that said, uh, I'm sure you are here to... Uh, understand what were some of those observations that uh, we had, right? Now, quickly jumping into that, the first observation was truly around how DBRX is actually, uh, you can leverage it, not just for uh, this use case creation, but even during the steps um, of the use case creation. So one of the first few things that we actually did uh, was to uh, for the structured as well as for the streaming data that we wanted, we actually just asked DBRX to create the code for us, right? So rather than engineers going in and trying to bring in uh, install-based data um, or, or create data pipelines or trying to create Kafka code uh, to bring in streaming data, we simply just used DBRX, uh, gave a prompt, got the code, and basically job became much more easier. And by the way, uh, you can also use it for not just these two activities, but also to convert any legacy code. Right? That's something we didn't do, but there is definitely potential uh, for those things. The second area was now about, do you truly understand your data, especially areas where you do not have, for example, any type of metadata uh, associated with the, that particular information, especially, for example, the sensor ping data, how do you leverage DBRX to again give a prompt and understand what is the data that's truly coming in? Now, this is also uh, an area where uh, DBRX even helps that if you provide a prompt on this particular data that you're bringing in, what are the different types of use cases that you can do, it will even tell you what are the possibilities that are available with respect to the data that you're trying to bring in. So that is also something uh, that was, uh, uh, that can be helpful, right? In our case, of course, the first thing was very helpful for us to be able to quickly understand the data. Because keep in mind, all of this, uh, this entire implementation was actually done in three and a half weeks. So you're not talking huge cycles, uh, but effectively something that is uh, that you are essentially able to turn around uh, in a matter of a uh, few weeks or so. The third area, uh, which is really about 
things like um, how do you improve the readability um, of the code uh, that you are creating that's also an area where dbrx was essentially very helpful so all the code that we had written in uh, python pyspark as well as kafka uh, we were effectively uh, able to not just comment on it but more importantly create faqs out of it create a detailed documentation out of it that is something that uh, if you actually look at it most engagements run into uh, most projects run into trouble because let's be honest um, uh, engineers first love is never documentation right so in order for us to do uh, that that's really where uh, dbrx was very helpful for us to create those particular documents and then make sure that now you have a scalable faq that you can basically uh share it with the broader set of people who are going to manage this particular solution and enhance this particular solution going forward so these were essentially three areas where the whole aspect of uh how generative ai is helpful to the data to decisions life cycle basically came in now the next uh hack really was about uh, going a little beyond and started to look at it from a perspective of uh, what we call agentic workflows, right? Um, as you would remember, I talked about three different types of data. Now, when you're talking about three different types of data, um, you effectively want to be able to ask a prompt because to the end user, they don't know where the data is effectively coming from. Uh, they, their prompt could effectively have information that could bring it from, let's say, your structured data, your streaming data, your uh, unstructured data, and more importantly, a combination, any combination of those above. So from that particular perspective, uh, what we uh, did was uh, actually leverage this uh, agentic framework uh, the good part is DBRX uh, does uh, support that. And with these multiple agents, we created basically three different agents. One, uh, what is the basically the document agent, which is what is looking at the unstructured information. Uh, second, which was uh, truly the, uh, the install base agent, which was looking at the structured information. And then we had the IoT agent, which was basically looking at the uh, the streaming uh, information. And the idea truly was uh, to be able to uh, stitch them together uh, so that irrespective of the prompt, uh, your questions effectively are uh, getting answered without any uh, issues as such. So that was also uh, an uh, interesting uh, hack that we uh, basically uh, observed and this was very helpful in terms of bringing the different types of data so that your tasks uh, can still get uh, executed, your questions can still get answered. The next uh, uh, hack was truly around the most, uh, I would say, most uh, hated area around generative AI, which is hallucination, right? How do you build trust in the model, right? How do you make sure that um, uh, data is uh, protected, you're not sharing your information back to the, the core uh, models, how is that you can uh, be sure about the accuracy and all those particular pieces. So from that particular perspective, uh, at least given the amount of time that we had, we went ahead and did uh, two key things. One, which was uh, around data protection. So you could go into the model and just start asking um, random questions as I'm sure any any user would want to do that. But uh, anything that is related to, uh, for example, uh, discriminatory speeches um, or anything around uh, stuff that's not truly contextual to the problem at hand, uh, things around people's uh, uh, PII type of information, especially the field service agents, the customer data that we were bringing in, we made sure that uh, we are essentially not showing that and there is guardrails that are present, right? Good part is again with DBRX, you can 
put those particular uh, uh, guardrails, right? Those trust-related guardrails. Um, and then uh, the second part was uh, essentially around uh, the aspect of these guardrails itself that uh, you can make sure that uh, even, and as you can see uh, potentially on, on that, it is always going to redirect you to certain uh, specific things, right? If people are asking uh, some even more uh, random questions, it will even take you to something like the employee handbook and the employee policies and all that stuff. So you can obviously do uh, a bunch of those uh, particular pieces from a, from a DBRX standpoint. Now, moving to the, the sixth uh, hack, this is something, uh, again, uh, became very, very interesting and helpful for us because we are effectively talking about this particular use case to be delivered to 84 countries, right? This is a global organization uh, present in more than 80 countries. And there is not always the quality of uh, field service uh, manuals, the equipment manuals is not always the greatest when it comes to a multilingual type of a scenario, right? Now, uh, the good part was with DBRX uh, providing multilingual uh, support, we are actually able to ask the question in any language irrespective of where and how the underlying information is stored. And that is uh, uh, essentially a very big, uh, I would say, uh, benefit because now the time that you're spending trying to replicate and trying to create those field service manuals in different languages so that you're, um, let's say, somebody in Japan or somebody in India, somebody in the Middle East is able to understand, you no longer need uh, to have uh, those multiple copies of manuals created. So we had essentially just the English language manual and you could basically take uh, any of the leading uh, languages that are basically supported from a DBRX perspective. Now, moving to the last one, and this is uh, an area, to be honest, something that we are still in the process of uh, delivering, but I thought this is an interesting area and hence uh, uh, brought that in. And this was truly about the ability to uh, connect the dots, right? Typically, you would see uh, rag-based methods uh, basically getting used, which is what we uh, did uh, as well. But the idea truly was, how do we leverage the power of um, a knowledge graph? Because with a knowledge graph, you can identify the relationships that exist uh, between the various uh, entities and the behavior. Right? Various parts, for example, dependent on each other that you can extract from uh, the, the equipment manuals, for example. Right? So what we are now doing is uh, exploring uh, basically uh, graph databases like uh, Neo4j or Cosmos uh, DB uh, to truly um, combine the uh, information that uh, is present uh, within the uh, the vector search and then basically leverage it uh, along with the knowledge graph and then basically be able to uh, enhance the effectiveness. So all those manual relationships that had to be created today, you would effectively not have to uh, basically do that uh, going forward, right? And that was something that uh, uh, we believe will be the next frontier will be something that will be very, very helpful. Now, while I talked about those seven different uh, uh, areas, seven different key observations that we had, the question was, how does it all uh, essentially come together, right? So this is something where uh, we leverage the entire uh, Databricks uh, stack, um, right from uh, the ability uh, to, uh, let's say, uh, store all the vector, uh, let's say, databases, uh, sorry, the embeddings within the vector search, or for that matter, leveraging the DBRX uh, uh, base model as well as the instruct mode, um, or for that matter, as I'm sure uh, all of you might be aware, 
being able to uh, leverage the Unity catalog because without Unity catalogs, you would not be able to uh, use uh, the DBRX um, uh, and the Mosaic AI uh, related uh, services. So this was uh, the broader, uh, uh, I would say, reference architecture, which kind of brought in, uh, as I was talking about on the technical steps, brought in the uh, structured, the streaming, the unstructured information, uh, created the navigator app, and obviously leverage uh, DBRX and the RAG uh, framework to be able to stitch it uh, all together. Now, coming back to the functional aspect of it, uh, how and why uh, has it uh, helped uh, the organization? I would simply put up a quote uh, that uh, uh, my uh, basically partner in crime on the um, on the customer side uh, basically put in uh, for us that it is not just uh, going to help save uh, time in terms of responding to let's say uh, any units that need to be troubleshooted but also during the installation process itself this is very helpful and more importantly one key metric that the field service teams are very focused on is first time fix and the intent is with this search AI solution they would effectively be able to um, increase their first time fix rates which is again at the end of the day uh, a big cost saving as well as a big customer experience uh, enhancer right. So I hope this session was of uh, help to uh, all of you. Um, what we we have a booth uh, uh, in the Expo Center, and uh, what we are doing is uh, as part of this DBRX and uh, Mosaic AI, we are actually giving a chance to uh, five uh, free uh, pilots to um, essentially folks that are interested and based on the use case. Uh, if you are interested, we are here. We can talk or we can always meet up uh, at the booth. Uh, that's all I had. Happy to take any questions. I have a couple of my colleagues, uh, as I mentioned, Abhishek, as well as uh, Satish, who are the, the, the key SMEs and who truly help deliver this particular solution for our customer. Thank you.